What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be talking about Baruto Next Generations. Baruto Next Generations is a spinoff anime that came out April 5th, 2017, following Baruto, the son of the Hokage, and the previous main character of his own show, Naruto Uzumaki. With a new age and a new Team 7 headed by Baruto, Satara Uchiha, the daughter of Sasuke and Sakura, as well as newcomer Mitsuki, the son of Orochimaru, we follow Baruto's adventures and footsteps as we follow his new team and characters on their journeys to becoming great shinobi. As we all know, this is a story following one of the most iconic animes in all of history in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, and let me tell you, I don't think this anime even holds a candle to what we have gotten from its predecessor. I would also like to make it very clear that this is a video regarding the Baruto anime only. I understand the manga can be awesome from time to time, and I honestly don't have that much beef with the manga as of late. It's been pretty epic. The Baruto anime is another story. I've never seen an anime like this simply stray so far from what its predecessor laid before it, and it all goes back to the groundwork of simple storytelling. If the road has already been laid out before you, why even stray down a different path if success is literally right in front of you? I would say I have a lot of main gripes and problems that I have for this show, but for the sake of not making this an hour-long video, I've decided to break it down into three main problems that I have with the show, as well as laying down some ground rules in this criticism. First, I would like to say that I won't be comparing Boruto to Naruto Shippuden, seeing how we're not there in the anime as of yet, and there will only be comparisons to original OG Naruto. Even though that show concluded with 220 episodes, and we're already on episode 240 of Boruto. And with that, that literally concludes all of the ground rules on this video. And now with my three main problems in the show, we're going to be tackling the disrespect of our OG characters, the lack of whole character development in this show, including our main characters, as well as our sides and our villains, and the fact that the world, and I guess I would just say the Naruto universe as a whole, doesn't even feel like the same Naruto universe we watched for almost 1,000 episodes. I mean, like, what are we doing, mates? With our first main problem, the disrespect of our OG characters is absolutely criminal, and leading that list is surely Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke is a character that we have been following from the very beginning, and a character that was top 5 in his verse by the time the series concluded. But there would be absolutely no way you would be able to tell that if you were a newcomer to the show, because the Sasuke in this show is really unrecognizable. Sasuke was a man always on revenge and a dark path in the sake for his fallen and almost extinct clan of the Hujias, a genius from the day that he entered the academy to become a full-fledged shinobi. He's a man with the prowess of fighting characters like Deidara and Orochimaru, Killer B, the Raikage, and even Naruto. But in this show, he's out of chakra faster than Shikamaru can even come up with a plan. I completely understand the fact that it's hard to write stakes for a character like Baruto when we have OGs like Sasuke in the verse, but to blatantly nerf and disregard the character that we've known into this day is pretty lazy in my opinion, and I would say kind of a slap in the face to the people that grew up watching this character. And I can't even begin to explain what happened to Shikamaru and my guy Konohamaru. There's been a lot of YouTube videos about my boy Konohamaru, and that's because he's been a fan favorite. He's unrecognizable in this show. It's shameful. But first, let me talk about Shikamaru. Shikamaru is one of the smartest getting in the village at his time, and the first to become Jonin, with battles under his belt like Hadan, and eventually becoming the... HQ commander of the Allied Shinobi Alliance after losing his father to the Ten Tails during the Fourth Great Ninja War. He's a man that became advisor to the Hokage in the present day, but again, that would be nowhere to be seen in this new writing of Boruto. He's never around when a Kage level threat threatens the village, and when he is, he's constantly being overruled and overstepped on his advice by characters like Naruto and even now newcomers like Kawaki and Amado. The show makes it very obvious that Shikamaru is here to not be taken seriously and just meant to be forgotten and I could not begin to explain it. But that obviously leads us into the character that I think has gotten the most disrespect in the entire show and that is my boy OG Konohamaru. Like Sasuke and Shikamaru, Konohamaru was a character that we have gotten from the very beginning of the show. A character who is the grandson of the third Hokage Sharitobi, 
and a boy who idolized Naruto and had an unmistakable will of fire and ninja way, even jumping into action when the six paths of pain attacked the village. He's a character that would eventually be taken under Naruto's mentorship and become the man that he always strived to be, the Hokage. And now being the leader of the new Team 7, many people, including myself, thought that we were going to get the Kakashi treatment of being a reliable Jonin, always there to protect his team of Ginnon, teaching them life lessons on what it truly takes to be a full-fledged shinobi, as well as even learning some lessons from his pupils, kind of like Kakashi, and becoming a stronger and more fulfilled character. But instead, we get an unreliable shell of a character that they try to tell me is Konohamaru, and place him into missions with our new Team 7, as well as fights that don't even involve the characters to just simply be fodder to raise fake stakes for the inevitable new villains that we will be fighting for whatever arc that they need. Konohamaru at this point should be at a Kage level shinobi to say the least, or at least even in the tier of Might Guy or Kakashi in the original shows, but now that I even say that, those are Kage level shinobis, not someone on the level of Mitsuki on his team. But the lazy writing and the lack of attention to detail doesn't just go for the main OGs. It's creeping into the characters that they're trying to promote as well. Mitsuki is probably a prime example of that. Mitsuki is a character that was added into the show without any prearranged love for the character, but the artificial son of Orochimaru, who's one of the most deadly antagonists in all of the Naruto verse, doesn't have a single character trope that defines who Mitsuki is. He's a character that follows Boruto and yeah, that's about it. He's a character still shrouded by mystery when it comes to his powers with the introduction of Sage Mode, but the show also offers no further explanation on what that all actually means and how that ties into the story. Does he have to train his body in order to hold the chakra required for Sage Mode? Does his body need modifications to hold the chakra to do Sage Mode? It's not even talked about amongst his teammates, which literally makes no sense because in original Naruto, if you have something that makes you differentiate yourself from other shinobi like let's say a curse mark that Orochimaru gave to Sasuke in the Chunin exams it's literally the talk of the village like how does this how, how do we not talk about this in the village it's lazy you would also never know that there were other characters in this show if you only watch the canon episodes there is literally a whole variety of characters that Boruto went to the academy with that have interesting backstories, interesting jitsus, and literally just blank sheets of papers that the creators and writers have to develop these characters. The next generation of Inoshika Cho with new jitsus just being able to be combined and developed with Sai being Inogen's father, Metal Lee being the son of Rock Lee, who was originally probably the most underutilized character in original Naruto. Even characters like Kagura from the Hidden Mist Village and Shinki from the Hidden Sand, we even got introduced to a Kakashi lookalike character in the second arc of the Chunin exams. Like, damn, who is this guy all about? Why do you look like Lord Seven so much compared to the other Hokages? Why do you like him? Has he done anything for you? Even characters like Denki, where we were introduced to, to have new discoveries in this whole entire universe, like scientific ninja tools, and don't get me wrong, I'm completely of the mindset that not everything needs to be so sad and not everyone has to come from such hardships like the wartime setting that we were in in most of Naruto. But I mean, I can get more character development from someone like Chocho's caliber of a character besides the fact that she just likes to eat food. Boruto also gets no help in that department either. We're first introduced to him as an immature child seeking for attention similar to Naruto as a child. The main difference is that Boruto does those things without facing actual adversity. Naruto wanted that attention and recognition of the villagers because of who he was as a Jinchuriki and the fact that he wasn't asked to be this way. Boruto is a character with daddy issues and doesn't fully recognize what it means to be a full-fledged shinobi, yet alone the Hokage. And by the end of the Momoshiki arc, I will give the show the credit of giving him the development of respecting who his father is with the lessons from Sasuke, truly learning what it means to be a shinobi. So around 60 to 70 episodes into Boruto, he's at the same point that Naruto and Sasuke were at at episode one of their respective show. 
Boruto up to now in his known universe is the son of the seventh Hokage, Naruto, and gentle fist user and Bakugan wielder, Hinata. He has access to his very own doujitsu, which allows him access of the powers of the Sharingan and the Bakugan, as well as the ability to use gentle fist. He has three chakra nature transformations and uses his own unique Rasengan with the vanishing Rasengan and has the senseis of Konohamaru and Sasuke Uchiha. On paper, that is. When you watch the show, you get the full gravity of how terrible the situation is with his character, not only winning fights by the Rasengan and no strategy or use of his other abilities, but making it all worse because he's still the same kid by the end of the Momoshiki arc. But that, of course, is leading into our third and final point of this show not even feeling like it is in the same Naruto verse. In Naruto, we were introduced to many ways and feelings of what it means to be a shinobi and to have that will of fire. Sensory shinobi like Hinata, Shino, and Kiba, and medical ninja like Sakura were just as vital to protecting your teammates in the village as being a Kage-level shinobi. There were jitsus where strategy had to be a little bit more involved, like with Shikamaru and his shadow-based jitsus, or the fact that some people weren't even born with the ability to create ninjutsu and simply just have to strive off taijutsu like Rock Lee. Geniuses in the world like Sasuke and Neji, and even broken characters when they were first introduced at the time like Gara and his indefensible sand. There were characters like Kisame, the tailed beast with no tails, and Kakashi, the copycat ninja, Sabasa of the seven ninja swordmen, and even Sasori of the red sand. They were characters with their own lore and backstory to build upon the world building that the original series of Naruto had to create. There were no guidelines of what needed to be done and built upon, only blank sheets of paper that the creators utilized to their fullest potential, and let me tell you, nothing like that is even remotely added into this world of Boruto. It's a Sutsuki, then anime filler, then a Sutsuki, then anime filler. It's terrible. There's no villains of real depth and meaning to the actions that they're carrying out, just simply empty vessels for our new Team 7, or I guess the combination of Naruto and Sasuke, to beat up and then remove from the story, so we can just move on to the next villain and just inevitably repeat the same process. Where are the Shadow Clones, the Transformation Jitsus, the Flashbacks, tropes that made the Naruto show an unanimous and trademark show that is worthy of being on the Mount Rushmore of anime. While I understand that Flashbacks might have been used a little excessively in the original show, Flashbacks build your relationships with characters, remembering what they've gone through to forecast the actions of what they're going to do in the present moment as well as building characters that we were just introduced to, to get us to know the character more and what has led them to the interactions with our characters now, as well as the motivations that they have when no one is around. It's a look inside the character without it being surface level dialogue that we are given in this show. We weren't even given flashbacks for when Kurama died in the Boruto show. This is a character that we have been following with Naruto since the beginning. I mean very first scene of Naruto was Kurama. I don't understand. A tailed beast, a menace to the village and the lives in this universe, used as a weapon and even isolated from his own kind. To be at a point where he is not only sacrificing his life for the sake of Naruto and the bond that they have created, but for the sake of the hidden leaf as a whole is remarkable character development and we don't even give us the audience as the older fans and newer fans watching the show a flashback of the trials and the tribulations that they've gone through over their time together as Jinchuriki it's repulsive shadow clones and transformation jutsus weren't just used for no reason they were used for strategy learning your opponent's tendencies and jutsus that were vital information in a shinobi fight Kakashi and Orochimaru were prime examples of what these jitsus were primarily used for, and in one of these latest episodes of Boruto, it's a prime example of the path we strayed so far away from. Right now in Boruto, we are in a pirate arc, and we're with our characters like Team 7 and Kawaki, as well as characters like Dinky, Metal Lee, and Awabe, a team of eight shinobi, also teaming up with Kagura and his crew of the Hidden Mist, and... They all go to sleep at the same time while on 
a mission. <laughs> so funny. Where are the shadow clones? Where is our Shinobi IQ? We are on a mission and the writers decide to truly write down that all of the Shinobi on the mission were asleep at the same time. Like no one on watch. It's shameful how far that we have gone down the path. And if this show didn't have our OG characters in the name, this show would be unrecognizable to a point where I would feel like I'm completely watching a different anime. The two minute fight scenes, the lack of villain depth, I could literally go on and on about the path that this show has taken and the incredibly different path that I would have taken as a fan of this beloved franchise. But honestly, at this point, I think the damage has already been done. Boruto now has one of the most divided fan bases that anime could ask for, and I don't think that they're doing themselves any favors with the writing being displayed episode to episode. I would love to tell you that I think eventually one day Boruto can get back on track and maybe even one day surpass the original, but they will have to do a lot for that, and I mean a lot. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to hit the like button because that would surely help get this video out there because I truly want to hear you guys' words in the comment section below. This was obviously something that has been on my mind since maybe halfway through the Boruto anime, and I just want to hear different perspectives on why you might agree or might disagree with me. As I said at the beginning, I only compared this to original Naruto, and I felt as if I clearly displayed my opinions with prime examples of why I think this show doesn't even compare. But this is also just my opinion, and I would love to have an open discussion with all of you guys on how you are feeling about this anime. So make sure you like and subscribe. Also comment, do all of the YouTube algorithm stuff, but otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, dear viewer.